Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Did we love? Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is thy fruit of the womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hey, how you doing? What a day. This weather is matching our mood. You know, in the movies, whenever you see a funeral, it's usually, they set it in the rain, and I think that's symbolic. The reason why they do that is because why it rains at funerals in the movies is because it matches your mood. It's a great um, a great I don't know what you call that. Anyway, so yeah. This is funeral. Um, my brother-in-law Ninoy passed away horribly from COVID. And uh, a word of warning to everyone take it seriously. It's not done yet. It's mutating. If you haven't got your shots, forget about politics. Get your damn shots now. If you can. Unfortunately, not everybody is as lucky as we are here in the United States. In the Philippines, oops, most people can't get their shots because um, they just don't have them. And uh, so then you have to, if you can't get your shots or, you, you know, you have to stay quarantined pretty much. You need to wear your mask when you're out. You need to social distance. You do not want to go with what my brother-in-law just went through. I, I can't even describe it. It's so horrible. And we, I mean, we're going through all the grief right now. There's guilt, there's anger, there's frustration, you know, there's bargaining, all of that, everything. Everybody in the family is just, I mean, on both sides of the ocean here, it's un unreal. I still don't even, haven't even come to grips, you know. We, Nino and I used to be kind of like, partners in crime in the Philippines you can see the videos we would just go and uh, <laughs> one time we went out and his mother said turned to us said no monkey business and both of us went ooh, 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 you know just he was a very fun loving guy he really knew how to live um, you know no matter what his circumstance was he was very kind and considerate and and always had a joke and saw the fun and everything and uh, he was great to be around and uh, we're gonna miss him a lot and I'm just so sorry that he went through what he went through just to you know 
basically pass away in the middle of the night in a hospital alone with nobody nobody around them except medical people isolated alone it's covid you know this is not you know this is not some moonshot conspiracy bull crap this is real it's just like you know, media has not exaggerated this one bit. If anything, they haven't talked about it enough. And when you get it, I mean, he had a pre-existing condition. He's only 50 years old. He was going to turn 51 on July 4th. Didn't even make it to his birthday. Just about a week shy of his birthday. And he had asthma. And unfortunately... And the thing that makes everybody feel guilty was he felt too, either too proud or too scared to ask for help from the family. So he let it go for about two weeks while he had the symptoms. And he knew that he had the symptoms. And plus, the government over there and the people's attitude is like, if you've caught it and you're poor, then we're going to look down on you and really make life hard for you. And he was afraid. He didn't want to be put in a hospital and isolated when he was trying to earn a living. And they don't have a welfare system like we do. The welfare system is the family. Your family. You know, your family makes the sacrifices and, and provides for you while you are in the hospital. And for whatever reason, he didn't feel like he could ask for that. So he suffered until it was too late. By the, the time he asked for help, I'm afraid he was already too far gone. So, yeah. And, and that's, that, that is on all of us. That's what's weighing on us right now is we all feel like maybe we contributed to that. And, you know, there's a lot of family history behind that, so I won't even go there, you know. So, yeah, what can you say? Okay, this is routine, but this is not routine. Let me adjust. Get less hood, less headroom. Uh, back to my um, my therapy. I didn't go on Monday because of bereavement. Haven't been to work all week because of bereavement. I go in tonight at midnight, and then on Monday I'm by myself. That's new. I'm a little nervous, but I think I can handle it. They said they would take it easy on me, which is nice. Um, yeah, we're just missing my brother-in-law, and uh, it still feels unreal. And um, just, you know, somebody who is... Probably the liveliest of the bunch. Oops. And that's what makes it unreal. It's just, you know, a person you remember being outgoing and and, uh, you know, just adventurous and full of humor and full of life and like that, you know. So, we're still trying to get over it, and uh, the funeral is on Friday, or not Friday, Sunday, July 4th, at oh dark 30 for us. It's 3 p.m. for them, but that's about 4 a.m. for us. So we're going to be getting up early and attending a funeral online virtually, and uh, it's still trying to sort out because other members of the family have got it. His immediate family, his uh, part, domestic partner, 
Uh, we think she's got it. And somebody who was their uh, companion, helper, he's got it, we think, and got it pretty bad. So this is not over by far. And, uh, you know, people are really worried because um, in some ways this world has had kind of a medieval reaction to this thing. If you've got it or if your family has it, then everybody just kind of, you're on your own. They're not going to help you. They're just going to lock you in, a, um, in your house and, and tell you they hope you get better and quarantine you for like a certain amount of time. And even, uh, it's a mess, a real mess. It's, don't even want to get started. Anyway, I'm done with my therapy. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm going for an ice cream. Stress eating. Uh, I can't go for coffee. I gotta to try and go home and go to bed. Get ready for my midnight shift. Coffee. Coffee. Esteban. Oops. I'm here on the patio with my doggies. But you know, I can't leave my doggies and it's hot today. It's the first opportunity I've taken to actually get out. Mm, yeah, pretty much, other than getting donuts. The missus likes donuts and Casey sells donuts really cheap by the dozen, so. Like I really need a donut. But uh, yeah, it's still the, the ongoing crisis. It sucks. And we haven't really been telling anyone because we're trying to keep it a private matter, but we need to let people know. There are people who should know and don't know, and There are people who want to know, and it's a shame that there are people we don't even really know or care about who know more than some of the people that are close to us, just because trying to keep it private for whatever reason. I mean, this is something you can't really keep private. It gets out eventually. I mean, that being the, the death of my brother-in-law. But anyway, it's back to hot and humid. Crazy hot and humid, it's the July weather. Uh, it all happens at once. And today I found out that the job I put in for at my workplace, they said no. That I'm doing too crappy a job for them, they don't want me. So I'll be looking for another job elsewhere. And uh, that's that, maybe I'll Uber. If I'm not doing a good job, then I don't want to be there. You know, I'm doing the best I know, but I guess it's not good enough. So that's that. And uh, so yeah, you know, fun all the way around. Happy summer. They're, they're going to hire some kid, and uh, that, that isn't the, the way, I, you know, 20 plus years experience, but we'll get some kid who doesn't know anything, and we'll train him, so I guess, you know, maybe I can Uber or live under a bridge or something. It's just, you know, this is just the emotional state. It's all coming together at once. And, uh, you know, like 
like the weather right now is hot and terrible, humid. It's in July. But last week it was cool and rainy and just kept raining and raining and raining, which was perfect because, you know, like you say, a funeral, they always show funerals in the movies. It's always raining at a funeral. They don't show it bright and sunny and happy, usually. And that's because uh, they want to... Uh, they want to set the mood, you know. They want it to be gloomy. And last week, this week certainly was gloomy. I call it last week. I mean, Monday. Jeez. Monday was Monday, just a couple of days ago, really. But it seems like it was over a month ago. I mean, Sunday when he was ill. And we were thinking that the chances weren't looking so good that was Sunday Saturday going into Sunday and then Monday Monday morning he passed away and it just seems like forever ago some people say oh it just seems like it was just yesterday not for us seems like it was forever ago <sighs> try and cheer up and be positive uh, definitely got to get a different job it's hard to be positive when you go into work every day and it seems like nobody even wants to talk to you I'm like, oh man, I must be horrible if nobody. And uh, one of the ladies in the diversity training came in and talked about that. She said, Have you ever had a job where you quit the job because you felt like you were going to be fired and nothing you did um, was right and nothing you said? mattered and people looked at you like you were had two heads every time you open your mouth and and or they'd nod oh yeah good idea good idea good idea and then they would uh ignore you ignore your idea and uh and it seemed like everybody there disliked you and you you know couldn't even say hi to some people because they just would not even acknowledge you half the time. Yeah, are you trying to... No, no I, I won't go there. But yeah, I, I know that feeling. Well, as soon as she said it, I about raised my hand. Said, yeah, I feel like that right now. It's been going on for years. And, uh... It sucks when people are telling you you're not even good at the one thing you want to do. So, but whatever, whatever. So this week has been nothing but a funeral all the way around. A funeral for our careers funeral for our family members and the worst thing is is that really you know I'm kvetching about my job but I have to say that's that's just a little heartbreak compared to the big one I mean I can't I can't even I think maybe I'm festering on this one thing because the other thing is so painful I'm at a state right now where I could care less. But, whatever. Haven't been here in forever. The dog park. Do we remember this place? <coughs> Stella, you remember this place?
You should not shop for groceries while heartbroken and hungry. And that's just what I did. Ninoy's funeral was early this morning, actually. It was late afternoon there in the Philippines. It was 3 p.m. their time, but it was 2 a.m. their time. And actually, it began early, so it was like 2.50 our time. And uh, I was telling Suyen that uh, in the movies, usually when you see a funeral or, you know, on TV, it's raining. And that's a... Uh, to show the, to try and help you set the mood. Well, guess what it did? I, I even better that it would do this. I said, I think it's gonna rain during his funeral. It rained hard too, and miserable, dreary. It really perfectly matched the mood. Set the scene, you know, like the sky is crying and so are we. And then I went to the grocery store. Actually, I went for a long drive and uh, just to kind of, I don't know, clear my head about things. And then, you know, the phone started going crazy and I, I forgot it. And now I'm in the doghouse, left the missus alone in her hour of need. I don't know if this is like a peace offering or what, but I went over here to get stuff for July 4th. Oh yeah, by the way, it's July 4th. Not only is it, is it Ninoy's birthday, ironically enough, it's also the birthday of our country, but I, not my favorite holiday, no, not into fireworks. You know what would make this a nice holiday is if, uh, you know, did something with American history to show our appreciation or treated it more like Memorial Day or Veterans Day, you know, instead of like blowing crap up and, you know, blowing up our our paycheck and scaring the animals and people shooting guns up in the air like stupid idiots and then every you know the next day we get to find out if somebody some child usually got murdered overnight by some idiot spraying bullets in the air yeah happy independence day oh well, what's it about by the way uh, it's about fireworks and shooting bullets so, you know, my rant. I'm not the, uh, I'm not the nicest person to be around right now. I'm, I'm pretty much depressed about a lot of things and, you know, Ninoy and life in general. And I think it's just, you know, a lot of things just got, a lot of things just happened at once and None of it was good news or news that we wanted to hear or, you know, but it's, it's stuff that kind of new and expected, so. And then, you know, you got this big, I got to wake up early tomorrow morning anyway, so I don't really get to enjoy it. And uh, so I bought some food and I don't feel like grilling. So I bought some pre-prepared ribs and I don't know why, chocolate cake for Ninoy, it's his birthday, and donuts, because whenever we'd have these kind of things in the Philippines, and I don't mean we, I mean it's Suyen's family's tradition, that they would get snacks and donuts, and matter of fact, funny story, my first meal when I arrived in the Philippines was Dunkin' Donuts. They, they came and got me at the airport, brought me to their house out in Compostela, and it was very, very hot and muggy and buggy, you know, mosquitoes, because they didn't have air conditioning in that house. And um, and on the way home, they, they stopped and picked up Dunkin' Donuts to celebrate the arrival of their, their guest. Huh. I don't know if I'm worthy of being considered an honored guest or not, but so we had Dunkin' Donuts. So today I bought HIV Donuts. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hy V. Oops. A little inside joke. We like to call stores things that they aren't. Sores. <laughs> so I got Donuts 
and they're all patriotic sprinkles and they're all the really bad fattening a million calories each kind with the filled I mean this is depression eating and then so you didn't ask me to get ice cream and of course she's mad at me right now which she probably should be so she's like you need to get dog food and then I said well I'm in high V because the place we get dog food at is closed and she's like well then never mind they'll survive and she was you know really angry at me so she probably won't be happy to see me bring all this stuff home how much did you spend you know I'm like well I don't know you know what I'm just I realize too that my food choices are pretty bad. I guess you can say this is an excuse on July 4th that I'm celebrating and buying all this bad kind of food like cake and ice cream and donuts and but I notice that we we tend to buy the bad stuff anyway and it's part of it is uh, not poverty, but cheapness, I guess. The bad stuff, though expensive, is cheaper than the good stuff. Like, I love to get fruits and vegetables and stuff, but expensive, and oftentimes we don't get to it in time before it goes rotten in our fridge. So we're so busy drinking the soda and eating the chips and, you know, blah, blah, blah. In case you can't tell. But anyway, uh, it's early for fireworks. It's about 6 o'clock, and yeah, it's 6.03. How do I know that? This app, you have the choice of using free run time code. And basically, it's set to the clock, which the phone is set to the atomic clock, so it's probably pretty darn accurate. 6.04.15. And um, so when I'm running this app, what is it called? Pro something video. I don't know what it is. Something I paid money for. It does some good things, but it's kind of finicky. and um, It likes to shut my phone down because it, it uses a lot of energy and makes the phone hot. So if you notice, when I'm in a car, I'm always running the air as high as I can. And oftentimes, I'm running the air on the front defroster to cool down the electronics. But, uh, yeah, and this will be a summary of, uh, and I don't think I feel like shooting or going crazy. I'm going to be in bed anyway. Trying to sleep. Won't be successful at it. A, a, you know, we got some really loud neighbors with their fireworks. And there were some, they were doing it till midnight last night. Boom, 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 and shooting off a million dollars worth of fireworks. getting ready to set the whole neighborhood on fire but uh yeah so I don't know why my uh, never mind my time lapse thing isn't on must have not have turned it on been doing that a lot lately too uh yeah so in addition to being boorish I'm in a bad mood and boorish You know everything yelling at the kids not really into it not into the mood the kids my wife got them a swimming pool at Costco or cheapo it's like a it's, it's almost like a hot tub without the the hot tub part and the kids are all excited about that and I'm like making them do a million chores in order to earn the you know whack those weeds and I'm making them set up the pool and I'm just kind of standing by I don't know how to do it anyway and the instructions are a million miles long you know lots of safety instructions like don't set it up next to electricity don't don't let the kids swim in the pool without you being there and I'm like oh yeah well you know what that pool will be drained really quick because we got kids who uh they want to go swimming they're gonna go swimming and I don't care if you're there or not if you tell them explicitly not to you look out the window and there they'll be thanks birth giver but yeah you can see my mood and so far the war hasn't started yet I saw one people littering the street with their 
their uh, their dollars. These people over here somewhere, not down here, over here somewhere, were shooting them off left and right last night. One of our neighbors says he's written off doing this because he, uh, two years ago, I think, he, uh, he almost got in a fight because some people were invited to the party who didn't have any respect, were like shooting off these huge bombs next to children and not even letting the children know, you know, and, and, and basically just really unsafe and crazy. And, and he said, don't do that. And they, they threatened him. They threatened to, to do more than fireworks. So he, he said, I don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. But I don't know. I can see that uh, maybe he's forgotten that because here's a bunch of fireworks, debris on the, on the street here. Our neighbors usually are very respectful about it. They clean up the next day, and so it's kind of their party. Maybe Suyan might let the kids go out and watch or something, but we didn't buy any, so the kids are not going to be shooting any off. Just watching this year, and I'll be trying to sleep. So, woohoo!